All right, hello. It's time. We got the preseason 2023 going, and uh, yeah, I'm just gonna do a first impressions, first look at it. So, I've seen a few tidbits here and there. I, I don't know any specifics. I just know that people have been hype. So, we'll see what's going on. Uh, let's see. Gonna be hitting the PBE tomorrow. Walk you through uh, things will be pretty early state. So expect things, um, icons, names, whatever to be different. Barring massive table flips, preview page won't be updated after publishing. While the patch notes come out, they'll have all the final details as usual. Um, I guess, okay, so as a wish list, I would probably want more emphasis on, um, like situational items. So, we have a lot of good core items now, so like stuff where if this is in the game or if this is strong, I pick this. Or like, it's weaker generally, but in this situation it's really strong, like I want more of that kind of, um, uh, problem solving. So that the item system has more thought to it in games. So, first, Return of Temtech. Temtech Drake will be returning this preseason with a brand new buff in Soul. It'll now grant a small amount of tenacity and heal heal strength when slain. Chemtech Soul will grant bonus damage when below a certain amount of health. Alongside the Chemtech Drake, the Rift will take on a new Chemtech inspired in appearance featuring Zonite chemicals and mutated jungle plants. Blast cones will now have twice the range as before. Honey fruits will upgrade into stim fruits, no longer slowing champions that consume them and granting a small bonus shield. Scryers will uh, upgrade into stalker's bloom and will now reveal a circular area around the plant and a cone opposite of the direction it was hit. Granting movement speed towards revealed enemy champion. Okay, interesting. That's gonna be... I mean, that's better than the old one. It's kind of like the old one, but... Uh, so, okay, I don't know how I feel about Tenacity Heal Shield because those are very situational. If you don't have a, um, if you don't have an Enchanter, you don't really care. If you don't have, if they don't have a lot of CC, you don't really care. Like this feels like it'll be the most peaky dragon in the game. The soul should still be good because below a certain health, that should generally, as long as the number is fine, be good. But I don't know. I think. Even if this were like raw HP, I feel like this could have been better. But these two are really good stats when you need them, so I'm not really sure. This is like this feels like a dragon you would want if you could see dragons in champion select. Soul is fine. Um This is interesting. All of these are really cool. Um it's gonna make it very much more explosive, which is, I guess, what the Chemtech Drake is supposed to do. Um, the Scryer's Bloom is probably the biggest change because, while yes, you can go further with this, you can you don't get slowed by honey fruits. It's like it's not really a game changer. This one, putting Ward to one health and giving you move speed, it means that like whoever controls the Scryer's Bloom or Stalker's Bloom will just immediately gain. Um, control of that area if they have the backup or if like they're uncontested like they, they literally like if you have someone hit this they get move speed they one hit every ward no matter if they're melee range whatever and then if they have the rune to spawn another ward on top of it they've just gotten vision control of that area of the jungle uh, th this is good for high higher elo uh, lower elo where people don't ward it, it's a bit worse but it's still really nice because it has the move speed, so you can catch someone out with the bloom and then get move speed to them. Jungle improvements. Ooh, yeah, I was really excited about this. All right. Avatar smites and jungle pass. The jungle is a dangerous place and it's dangerous to go alone. So take one of these jungle pets by purchasing them in the in-game store as an egg. These pets will acquire treats through monster kills and slowly over time as the game progresses, which will help them evolve. Once evolved, pets will give their owners avatar buffs, which empower them with different abilities. So, Noxian Ember Cat. This will be a pet, the pet of choice for junglers looking to play more aggressively. It will provide slows and bonus damage. 
Extali ex 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 examander ex examander. So I think it's this green one. Um, this jungle pet is perfect for junglers looking to frontline and tank for their teams. It will provide a shield based on your health that provides bonus lowers its tenacity when broken. That's actually really cool. So slows and bonus damage. Uh, shield and tenacity. Ionian Cloud Leaper. The jungle pet will be great for junglers looking to rotate and move around the map more quickly. It will provide more bonus move speed. Interesting. I think I like the direction overall so far. Um, the Noxian one is really big because there's a lot of melee junglers that like have a hard time sticking to their, uh, like to their gank targets or their enemies. And they have to like itemize into Bork or itemize into Slows or something like that to stick to them. This means that like, just doing your jungle clear, you get basically... It depends on how this works. If it's on the first auto or if it's on every auto or however it works. Or even if it's on spells. Um, but for example, for Shivana, who's been kind of out of the meta... Um, she could run this if if the spell slows she throws an e and they're slowed if it's an auto thing she gets onto them and then she stays onto them if it's first auto then she gets a big burst like there's a lot of uh ways that this could work uh Ixtali is actually is really nice for tank junglers because they haven't really had a like i don't really think they've been in a great place for jungle like they scale but like they don't have any peak moments, so people wouldn't want to play them. So this should be good, because shield based on your health, so it scales with you. Slow resistant tenacity is always nice for them. Uh, they might opt out of the rune now. And Ionian should be good no matter what. Like, this is like the high skill cap one, where like, if you're good at your jungler, if you know your limits, whatever, this should be the best one. I feel like in pro play, this will be the main one. And these two will be uh, more likely to be picked when it's a newer player or someone that's like not in the highest of elos. All right, leasing range indicators. In an effort to make the jungle more welcoming to players unfamiliar with the role, we'll be adding visual leashing indicators that will show how far camps can be pulled before their patience starts diminishing. We're also decreasing the distance camps can be pulled so no more having to stand on the perfect pixel in order to hyper optimize your jungle clears. This hurts fiddlestick. Velvet and a few other niche cases, I think. Like, this might mean that Fiddlesticks can't do his, like, two to three buff or a two to three camp start. Where he stands in the middle of, um, Blue and uh, Gromp. But overall, this might not be horrible. This does also hurt any, um, squishier or, or weaker junglers. Um, so any marksman junglers, for example, that maybe aren't it so it's not that big of a deal but it does hurt like the creativity of like if you wanted to play something out of meta or suboptimal in the jungle which could be good or bad um because a lot of them like if you play kaisa jungle which i've done a few times um you basically want to le uh, pull them as far as you can and because their movement speed is so slow you keep kiting them you can still probably kite them but it's probably going to be a bit harder um, I do like the visual indicators here because I've seen a few uh, visual indicators in Overwolf things and I, I dislike them. I think they're too cluttered and just too many numbers on the map. I think this is very clean, very nice, and uh, depending on how the leasing looks, like, I don't, they don't show it here, but that could be cool. Uh, overall, good. This is great for new players, like, Jungle is the most obtuse role for new players. Recommended jungle paths. Oh, that's what it's images. Okay. So another addition we have, uh, to, another addition we have to help make the jungle more accessible are recommended jungle paths for every champion. These first clears were determined by gathering data from high skilled junglers under high mastery champs across the globe. Pathing recommendations are based on which routes most often led those players to victory, which will be updated each patch. So it says start here on buff, Krugs, uh, Raptors, Wolves, Blue, Gromp. They're showing it with Sivir, which is really weird, and I don't think this would be a great pat for Sivir. I don't... Because you hit level 2, so I guess it's because your W will hit all of them. Okay, I guess this is 
probably okay. The Krugs is gonna be rough though. But yeah, overall this is pretty good. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of the recommending boost up data thing. Because sometimes there's off meta picks or off meta strategies or like an optimal strategy is not commonly known or commonly used. Um, but it's definitely necessary in the game because it helps new players have somewhere to start. And then they can look for that information later. Um, I think I would ideally like um, if they gave, gave you an option of two paths. Like they can show you two of the most winning and common paths. And then they have a third path that's like maybe manually put in or like the uh higher risk higher reward path or something like that but that would be pretty difficult to implement this is a good start communication tools this is i'm um, really looking forward to this all right updated ping wheel league is a team game at its core in order to better facilitate communication between teammates uh, we're doubling the number of uh, pings available to players. The eight pings on the wheel will now be as follows. Returning pings, clockwise. Re uh, so retreat. I cannot read these images. Uh, okay, so these are the ones that are staying. So everything we used to retreat on my way, assist me, enemy missing. And then it's... Um, oh, this is a killing menu. Okay. Push. All in. Hold. Bait. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, I, I'm a little confused because I guess hold was, hold is what they're going for, but they did a hint at a freeze thing. And I don't, I think it's for clarity because holding makes more sense to the average player than freeze. But I feel like making it known as the freeze ping enables newer players to wonder what that is and either ask or look into what freezing is and right now in the game there's like no indication that freezing is something you should care about the only indication is higher healer players or youtube content creators or whatever like i feel like in the game they need to have things that hint people that there's more to the game than what shows and then give them some um Oh, something to search, basically. New vision pings. We're also adding an entirely new ping wheel that focuses primarily on vision. Using this wheel, you can now indicate the following. From left to right, vision cleared. Enemy vision, need vision. Uh, vision cleared. I don't know why you would need vision cleared. Oh, I guess if, if someone's ganking, you can say this is free. Okay, fair. Enemy vision, yeah. And then need vision. I don't know... Yeah, I guess that makes sense. That does cover everything, because you can just use en enemy vision for everything else. I feel like they could have also... Well, okay, yeah, you do have the danger pings. Yeah, okay, that's fair. Alright. Objective voting. Get your team on board with taking an objective that can be difficult, and having everyone ping on my way if they can contest or retreat if they can't can get very confusing. We're introducing a new voting function. They will appear when objectives are pinged and will function similarly to a surrender vote. Now all players can vote and indicate whether or not they'd like to take or contest an objective. This I really like because lower elo, um, there's not a lot of decision making on this because it's just assumed that you have to take every drake and so players that are coming out of that a lot of time find it difficult to transition into thinking of it as a long game as like okay we give these two because we're weaker we take the next three because we're stronger uh we don't want to fight this we do want to fight whatever and oftentimes whoever pinged first is the one that's listened to because a play with everyone involved is better than like a bad play with everyone involved is better than a good play with uh half involvement so this is really nice because you can see it has, it's got a 50 second timer. So like the dragon doesn't even have to, well, it's spawned here, but the dragon ha doesn't have to be spawned. It's pinged. Everyone, let's say, is recalled and coming out of base. You all vote. You see four people say give, and then you're no longer wasting time passing to that dragon or have that one guy who wants to contest it and didn't realize uh, die for it. So this is really big. Um, let's see... This also means that it's 
again, it's giving new players a some feedback of what they should be thinking about in the game, which can be really hard. Like this, a lot of these changes are aiding uh, macro uh, onboarding, which is really nice. All right, off-screen pings. Last communication chain we have for you is a small quality of life update that will notify which direction an off-screen ping came from by displaying on the edge of your screen. Any missing pings will show on your screen regardless of where they are pinged on the map while retreat. On my way, assist me, hold, all in, and push pings will be only be displayed if they're within uh, 3,000. Watch the corner of this, corner to corner of your screen when fully zoomed out, or 20 team of your screen. That's okay. This one's okay. Um, I see one problem with this is that if all missing pings are always shown, if someone starts spam pinging missing ping, for whatever reason, outplay whatever, it can get pretty annoying, and if the whole team is doing it, you'll see like a bunch of arrows, so depending on how big it is. Overall, it's nice because a lot of, a lot of the time what happens is that like you have someone missing ping, but it's not on the screen of the person who's playing, so they're super involved. Let's say mid goes missing, and then uh, top is super invested in the fight top. They miss the missing ping because it's not very loud, it's not very noticeable, and it's not on the screen. So... What a lot of people do is they'll ping on top of that laner so that they know and then ping the direction of the threat, which works. This kind of simplifies that where like, you do a missing ping, there's a giant arrow on their screen. They can see who did it, so if it's mid, they're like, oh shit, mid missing. And you can still do the same strat of like, pinging on top of them just to make sure it's hurt or whatever, but this does help a lot if you need a, if they're doing quick rotation, like a Nunu mid. All right, vision system updates. Allied ward tracking. While there are currently ways to see how many wards you have out, there isn't a quick way to check which wards are closest to expiring other than manually looking at every word placed. We're introducing new ward visuals on the minimap that will indicate when wards are close to expire. They will change appearance when wards reach 60 to 30 seconds remaining before they expire. Okay, so like jungle camps right now. That's fine. That's pretty cool. Enemy word times. It can be hard to keep track of every single word that gets placed on the map, and even harder to successfully communicate that information to your teammates. Now, if you ping an enemy word that you saw them place within the ten, last 10 seconds, a perfectly accurate word timer will appear until the word is removed or expires. Huh. That's big, actually. Because oftentimes... If you ping an enemy word that so I okay, I think you have to see the actual body of the word. But that's pretty huge because a lot of time you can ward in front of people and like get away with it because people will forget or like rotate away from it. This way, like for example, if they ward mid, you see it, you ping it, um, you have full vision of it, you can actually skirt around the vision and know you're fine. Or like you can sweep around that ward give them a false sense of security, and then flank them from both sides. So that is actually kind of interesting, and it opens a lot of gameplay avenues. Okay. Um, pretty good. I'm wondering, see, this one, I was thinking uh, it meant if I enemy vision ping when I see them go into a bush or near a bush, then will it show? But I don't think that, I think that would be broken, because you see a support walk to the the bush, you know it's worded, you wait for them to walk back, and you ping it, and it's 10 seconds. Loadout and ability recommendations. Alright, recommended rune pages and summoner spells, and recommended abilities. Another change we're excited to introduce are optional recommended rune pages and summoner spells in champ select. Once you lock in your champion, you'll see a recommended runes button to the left of the edit runes page button. Once you lock in your champion, you see Okay. Opening this interface will display up to three rune and summoner spell setups you will be able to select to use in-game. System is still being fine-tuned, so you can expect to see more on this later on in the preseason. Okay. Recommendations will be updated once per patch and are informed by what setups are optimal and popular. Of course, you're always welcome to Theorycraft. I like this, specifically because this means that you can actually bring on new players and you don't have to worry about them getting lost. Right now, if you want to introduce a new player to League, you have to give them a bundle of stuff. First of all, you have to probably help them out yourself personally. Um, 
depending on how adept they are at the game and genre um you have to um wait for them to kind of acclimatize to the item system you have to wait for them to figure out runes a lot of time when i get new players they're starting i just tell them to go download blitz.gg because it's the only one that like auto does your runes so you don't even have to open it and that gives them a bridge to like learn the other system before touching runes which you can have suboptimal runes and still play the game they're good enough basically uh, same with the item recommendations in League. Again, my problem with this would be that it would limit people. Like, they would think that's the end-all, be-all. I just take one of these three loadouts and that's all there is to the game. But, uh, on the other hand, it means that people who don't care about the rune system don't have to interact with it and aren't punished for not interacting with it. So that's good. And again, I'm all aboard a better player onboarding because we do not have any we, we don't have a great player on board experience recommended abilities we're also helping players in game by providing them with recommended ability level ups this will indicate which abilities are typically ranked up at each level and similar to the above will be up there once the patch on what is currently optimal this is really nice because this one um is very hard to find if you're so it's not too different from u.gg but you have to go to u.gg for that. This is very nice. The only thing is, again, limiting um, creativity, but especially for a few niche cases where, for example, for AP Kaisa, I do 3Q into uh, 5W into uh, 5Q into E. That's not as apparent. That's going to have a lower play rate, and so it's not going to be as visible. Uh, you can find it, but how do you find it is the main thing. Like, I would like options here and like have an experimental one of like maybe one that's lower play rate but higher win rate uh even higher elo if you want but like something where it makes them think outside the box and like makes them think like oh there are situations where this is necessary or where this might be viable um it'd be a trap for new players though so this is the right way to go about it i just it's my own gripe with it uh this is good for the majority of champions though because most champions have a straight a straightforward QWE max R every time it's available so this is really good for new players and basically any champion for the most part the ones that uh would be weird are like Kaisa, Senna, um uh Belvet has some uh neat changes there's a bunch of champions like that where like putting a few points into one ability and then swapping is better or like not even leveling a ability like uh NASA support is an option so we'll have to see how that tur turns out. All right, top lane changes. We'll also be making some adjustments to help top laners scale faster and hit those key items and level break points faster relative to mid and bot. The changes will be as follows. Solo lane experience. Solo lanes will now receive a 95% experience multiplier, previously 93% from minions. Duo lane experience. Duo lanes will now receive a 22% bonus experience multiplier, previously 24.73%. So, okay. Top la or solo laners get more, dual laners get less. Mid lane gold changes. All minions spawned in the mid lane will now be worth one less gold before 14 minutes when last hit. Previously, one cannon minions were worth... Only cannon minions were worth less gold, but were worth 10 less gold. Okay. That's... Hmm. Dual lane will be really weird. Like, dual lane XP changes always make the game a bit funky so lane it's um they level up faster my only concern with that would be there's a lot of games where like uh so laner gets like uh a small lead and then suddenly like 20 minutes happen and then your level 11 bot laner is staring at a level 17 top laner and it's just kind of like you need a full build just to be able to deal with him um the mid lane changes are probably good it also targets um it's less punishing for new players because if you missed a cannon you or sorry it's i don't know where it's going with that but um i do like that the gold is spread out more um yeah i don't know i just like that it's spread out more there's less gold in mid but you get minions faster that's cool 
New and updated items. This is a big one. 12 new items. Ooh. All right, cool. Ikatia. Yes. Okay. Ikatia's endurance. Ooh, mythic. 400 health, 30 armor, 30 magic resist, 20 ability haste. So this is a tank item. For each second in champion combat, gain a stack granting 3 armor and magic resist up to 10 max. And max stacks become empowered, instantly draining enemies around you for 4% of your maximum health each. Reduced to 1% against minions, monster doubling your resistance stacks until end of combat. So you want to stay in combat for 10 seconds. You drain around you for 4%, so you want to be uh, in, this, in the middle of all of them. And then, yeah, you just get double resist. That seems pretty huge for tanks. I'm imagining this on a, an engaged tank like Zack. Like, Zack goes in, he TPs all five of them. He, like, he keeps, er... Uh, Actually, not even Zack. Even on, like, let's say... Like, let's say Rel, even though Rel is kind of iffy right now. If Rel gets a full five-man ult, they can't leave. She's art she's gonna guarantee at least four seconds. And she has enough CC to, like, stick on them. She can probably get the damage proc on at least a few of them. And her doubling resist, including her own resist, Seems decent. 50 second cooldown. This is good on people who have uh, gap closers. And okay, five of each. You lose HP, so you with this one you'd want to build something with more HP afterwards because you have enough stats with this. Radiant Virtue. Um, same stats. Upon casting your ultimate, you transcend, increasing your maximum health by 10% for 9 seconds. While transcended, you and allies within 1200 range of you gain 25 non-ultimate ability haste. You and allies will also leave... Wait, what? You and allies will also heal for 1.5% of your maximum health every 3 seconds. Increased by up to 100% based on what champion's missing health healing is doubled on your... What? Oh, yeah, on that one, okay. So you transcend at casting ultimate, increase your maximum health, and you all gain non-ultimate ability haste and heal. That's insane, honestly. Like, imagine this on a Kled. You cast your ultimate on Kled, you dive into their team, your team gets the speed boost. When they're around you, they get healing and uh, ability haste. Ability haste with, like, say, a champion like Zaya or, um, like, Lucian, Ezreal, like, any of those casters would be huge. You obviously want on all your supports. You're healing for 1.5% of your maximum health every three seconds. Um,. And then increase by up to 100%. So that's, what, 3%? Every 3 seconds? That's not bad, honestly. Yeah, that's that's insane. Like, imagine this on, like... Hecarim. Like, if you do Hecarim Yumi... Jesus, that's, that's wrong as heck. And, yeah, grants health. Okay. Iceborne Gauntlet. Oh, wow. We got the original one back. Oh, never mind. It's the same one. Oh, it doesn't have MR anymore. After using an ability, your next attack is enhanced with an additional 100% base AoE physical damage increase of Frost Field for 2.5 seconds. Enemies that move across the field are slowed by 15% plus 0.003% of your maximum health. Okay, I don't think that changed. Your primary target is slowed for double the amount and has their damage against you reduced by 10% for 2.5 seconds. So it's an exhaust now. That's actually really huge, I feel like. Health, tenacity, slow resist. Yeah, that seems really good. That's gonna be really nice, especially on like... Um, the ones that want to stay on you that currently go Iceborne, so like... 
Belved goes this, Shivana sometimes goes this, uh, there's a lot of like hyper, like, like, Vayne tends to go this often enough, because the slow is nice for her and then the health is nice. It's, the neat thing is that this is less useful on non-tanks, because it gives less base health, and it doesn't give boat resists. So it's less of a generic item. I think on Bane this is still fine though, because you just go Wit Sand plus Iceborne and you're fine. You go what? You go Gintu's uh, Zeal. Gintu's Zeal, Wit Sand, this, and then you're good for basically everything. Hmm. Interesting. This is going to be pretty huge. It's a 1.5 second cooldown, so you can probably chain this, honestly. Yeah, 2.5 seconds. So you can just chain exhaust them for 10% of their uh, damage. Alright. Goliath's Ascendiary. 800 health. 200% base health regen. 20 ability. These are so mythics. Holy crap, tanks are getting so many mythics. So this one you trade your resist for a lot of health and regen. So this should be good on like a full tank set if he ever wants to opt into it. A Mundo, a Tom Kench maybe. Hmm. Charge up a powerful attack. Oh wait, I just realized. Uh, Gauntlet doesn't have, doesn't give a size anymore. Charge up a powerful attack against a champion over 3 seconds, while within 600 range of them. Okay, so you have to change the champion for 3 seconds. Charge attack drains the target, dealing 50 plus 10% of your maximum health as bonus physical damage and healing you for that same amount. So this is uh, the tank thunder, but it's based off your maximum health. 10%, so let's say... That doesn't seem that good, actually. 10%. No, actually, that's pretty good, yeah. If a tank goes to even 3,500, they still do 350 damage, plus 50, 400. Yeah, 400 damage on a proc is pretty good. Plus, this gives a lot of health. You permanently gain maximum health equal to 15% of the drain. Oh. Oh, interesting. So, this plus uh, Grasp is now insane HP value I think there's gonna be a build that opens up where you start with Goliath there's already a lot of tanks that just ignore uh, mythic and go for like HP options like Hullbreaker and stuff I think there might be a world where you go Goliath into um, Gargoyle to go to become super teamfight tanky and then go into other items. I don't know how viable that'll be because I don't know how good this item is in lane. But if this item is enough in lane for you to be able to fight, this will be really good. Rod of Ages, welcome back. 300 health, 300 mana, 60 ability power. This item gains 20 health, mana, and 4 ability power every minute up to 10 times. Gain up to 200, 240 Upon reaching max stacks, gain a level, huh? Oh, okay, so... This accelerates your levels. So you don't, you don't go to level 19, but if you're level 13 in this procs, you're now level 14 for the rest. Okay. Grants all other legendary items ability haste. Huh. 60 ability power, so this is for someone who wants to be tanky and have a lot of mana. So Cassidy would probably still like this like he did before. It's a mythic item though. Does it replace... I guess that's fine. Cassidy just basically goes crown anyway, so this is just crown on like with more. So you get 100 ability power and 500 of each stat and a level. Yeah, this seems good. The only thing I have issue with is you have to buy this early, and the old one had a um, in lane passive that like healed you and like gave mana back, so you could sustain and get to that late game. This one doesn't, so I feel like this is very weak of a start. I guess that's like intentional, but like, would you just skip this mythic and then no? Because then you need the timer. I don't know. 
in 2024. Yeah, you'd need like, you'd need what, six level ups for it to equal the other mythics? Five? Five level ups to... Wait, no, I did the math wrong there. Four, five. Yeah, no, no, five. Hmm. We'll see. Roa was a good item. I don't know about making mythic though. Catalyst is back, okay. Restore mana equal to 15% of damage taken from champions and health equal to 20% of mana spent up to 15 health per cast. Toggle ability, you know. Okay, so this should be building in the Rod of Ages, so that's fine. Abyssal Mask. 500 health, 300 mana, 40 magic resist, 10 ability haste. Eternity. Restore e mana equal to 15%. Okay, so that's where that component's going to Abyssal Mask. Unmake. Cause nearby enemy champions reduce curse, uh, reducing the magic resist by 5 plus 1.5% bonus health. Okay, so it's based off your bonus health, so tanks benefit more. Each cursed enemy gain 9 magic resist. Champion can only be cursed by one enemy at a time, prioritizing the most potent curse. Okay, that's fine. I don't know what changed with this. Um, I think stat-wise it might have changed. It also has the uh, Eternity, which is nice. Keeps you in combat, which you want to do because you want to keep cursing them. Um, gives mana now. I think that's the change. Hmm. Okay. Sunfire is no longer a mythic item. Oh boy, okay. 400 health, 50 armor. Immolate. Taking or dealing damage causes you to begin dealing uh, health magic damage to nearby enemies. Increased by 25% against minions and 150. Two second deal damaging champions are epic. Increasing subsequent damage. So this is the same, but probably stats have gone down because it's um, no longer a mythic. Chem tank is also not a mythic. Health magic resist. Oh, this is weird. Okay. So you could get Sunfire and Chem Tank now in the same build. But it's armor and MR. I don't... I like them splitting it, but I don't know about splitting these two. These two seem pretty good at being general items. Ten ability haste, supercharge grant. Oh, you don't get the... You don't get the ability haste passive either now. Hmm. So I think the niche builds where you go like Chem Tank Akali is probably dead with this. Sunfire Akali could no, cause you it's for the mythic passive. I guess you could probably actually just go this then and get a normal mythic. I don't know, that's weird. Forty percent move speed towards enemies or enemy turrets for four seconds once near an enemy. After four seconds, a uh, shockwave is emitted that blows nearby ant champions by forty percent for one point five seconds. No damage. Uh, it's no longer a mythic item and it has no damage component so far. Okay. This is literally just for engage. So, yeah. Uh, Chem Tank Akali is definitely dead for this one. I think she can still opt into a lot of the tank builds though. Randuin's Omen. 400 health. 70 armor. Active. Briefly slow nearby enemies by 55% for 6 seconds. 60 second cooldown. Rock solid. Reduce incoming damage from attacks by up to 5 plus 0.35% of maximum health percent capped at 40% of the attack's damage. 40% of the attack's damage is pretty big actually. Cause that plus the armor. Critical resilience. Critical strikes deal 20% less damage to you. So this is nice for like engaged tanks. One thing I dislike is I like the current Randuin's design because it, as an ADC, for example, I can opt into Randuin's. If they have a Zed and he ults me, I immediately pop Randuin's when he lands. He loses a lot of AD, so he can't finish his combo. The armor and health let me survive the exchange. Um, that's no longer a thing, which I think that might be intentional, but I don't think... I, I think that was a neat optimization that wasn't always a good idea. It was just a nice option to have. 
but now it's like specifically tank based like everything scales off hp um everything's now a passive the slow is more for engage okay oh no spear of shojin all right <laughs> 65% attack damage, 300 health, 20 ability haste, dragon force. Your non -abil ultimate ab er, okay. Your non ultimate spells gain 6 plus 10% of bonus AD for melee champions. 4 plus 6% of bonus AD for range champions. Ability haste. Bonus AD, let's see. If we're thinking about an ADC. 65 AD, 20 ability haste. That's really good. Um, it's basically Navori, but for Bruiser. Yeah. It, instead of critting, you get it off bonus uh, AD. Let's say you get to 200 uh, AD, so that's 10%. Uh, so 20. So that would be 26 for melee, and I, I'm struggling with a 6%. It's less than 20, so let's say 18 or something like that. Plus the 20. That's not bad. One item gives you basically all the haste you need. Reduced to 3 plus 5% of bonus AD for melee champions. Uh, 42 plus 3 percent. Oh, interesting. So they have a tuning for immobilizing spells. That's weird though. Because like if, for example, you want to do it on Zaya or Rengar. Like Zaya, it does immobilize situationally. But that's, that's what you want the CDR for. And then Rengar, Rengar is probably fine because he can just Q twice or something like that, but like... Huh. I guess that's what they want to come back because that could be get toxic. Uh, gain up to 15% for melee champions, 10% for range champions, increase movement speed based on your missing health, max out when 30... Why does it have this? Gain up to... Why do you... I guess... Their goal is like, for example, a Renekton gains a ton of move speed towards... Uh, no, because missing health... That's such a weird ad. I guess it works for fighters. Okay. We're having a Tydra. 65 attack damage. 20 ability haste. 9% Omni Vamp. I think the attack damage went down. Not sure. Uh, cleave. Attacks and abilities deal 60% melee, 30% range, physical damage to other enemies within 350 units of the target hit. Carnivorous. Gain uh, 0.5 AD and 0.1% Omnivamp whenever you kill an enemy, stacking up to 25 AD and 5% Omnivamp. Lose 50% of these stacks on death. Oh. Can only hit one each target once per attack or ability every 10 seconds. Cleave does not trigger on structures. So is this like Magi's but for bruisers? 25 AD, so that gets you to 70. Ninety. And fourteen percent omnivamp. This item is basically a mythic if it's stacked. This one this might actually incentivize cause I was tinkering with a build for Kaisa where you do um uh, Ravenous Hydra for the AD for your Q Evolve and your Omni Vamp, and then you go from Ravenous Hydra into um, uh, AP or something like that. Because then you get to, yeah, because you gain AD per kill. It would be super snowball, though, so I don't think that would work actually. Oh, this is. Interesting. So fighters now have a Magi's. I don't know how good this is. It seems really good though. All right, and that concludes preseason 2023. Um, well, it was 44 minutes, but uh, yeah, we talked about everything. So let's do a quick TLDR. So, Camtech Dragon returning. Uh, stats are tenacity, heal, strength. Um, soul will be bonus damage when below a certain health. That is kind of mad to me. Situationally peaky. This is fine. Uh, plants are twice as useful. Um, you one-shot wards and gain move speed. Jungle monsters are really nice. 
uh, move speed, damage and slow, uh, shield and tenacity. Leeching indicators are nice. Uh, recommended jungle paths, nice for new players. Hopefully, doesn't cause players to only do these paths. Um, communication tools, amazing. I really like these communication tools. Um, push, all in, hold, bait are new. Vision pings, vision cleared, enemy vision, and need vision. Objective voting, I love. Uh, allows new players to uh, get introduced to the macro game and also allows every player on the team to have some input in it rather than the first person who pings. Uh, off screen pings, uh, missing pings will show up on your screen if they're off screen and any other pings within 3000 uh, units of you. Uh, concerns are the um, spam pinging that we have right now. Vision system updates, allied word tracking, uh, you can see when your words are about to expire, enemy word timers, if you ping a word uh, and you saw it, uh, you'll get a full, perfectly accurate word timer around that word, which is very interesting. Recommended rune pages summoner spells, really nice, new players will not need an add-on to basically functionally understand how the game works or which runes they should use recommended abilities again cool gives a starting point for new players love it uh hope it doesn't uh, stagnate creativity for uh theory crafting for champions that can do that top lane changes um solo laners will be much more ahead in terms of exp uh than they previously were dual laners will be much more behind uh, mid laners will have less gold but get gold more frequently so missing a wave is more punishing but yeah uh, overall this is fine I'm just concerned about the soul lane um, the, the like 2% situation or maybe even more actually where like the soul laner gets a small lead but because of that they can freeze and get a much bigger lead and then you're a you have like your fed bot lane is like a level 11 ADC against a level 17 top laner who's got tank items and all that. That's my only concern here. New updated items. Um, you can... I'll, I'll have a timestamp for the items so you guys can look at the item section. But um, uh, engage tanks. They engage. They gain a st a stat. For every second in combat, at 10 seconds, they do a big burst of damage and they get double their stat, uh, stats. Radiant Virtue. Um, cast your ultimate. Give your whole team regen and uh, ability haste. Um, gain more magic, maximum health. Iceborne Gauntlet. It's still a mythic item. Uh, now exhaust them, but also is now armor focused. So it's no longer the balanced one. Uh, this one, it now exhausts them by 10% every uh, 1.5 seconds for 2.5 seconds, so infinite. And gives health tenacity slow resist. Goliath Ascendiary. Uh, full HP spec. And you gain permanent health on damaging them with this item, which you have to follow them for 3 seconds. And then uh, attack them with a charge attack. Uh, it heals for the damage dealt uh, based off your maximum health. And yeah, this will be really huge for HP stacking uh, builds with like Grasp. Uh, Grasp of Goliath should be a really strong build. And then you can opt into say um, Gargoyle Stoneplate or something else. Rod of Ages is now a mythic item that scales into the game. Uh, gives you ability haste, gives you less stats than uh, the other items, but scales up past it so that you get to 100 AP with this, and you get a level, which should be really good at accelerating the pace if it's tuned right. Catalyst is back, it goes into Abyssal Mask, um, which now scales off a of bonus health, and... Um, it now has the Eternity passive where you restore mana based on 15% of damage taken and health equal to 20% of mana spent. Uh, pretty good. They're tuning a lot of the tank items back to be tank specific. 
Sunfire, no longer a mythic, now armor based and the same damage uh, passive. Turbo Chem Tank, no longer a mythic, now Madden Cruises based and uh, engage tank item. My only concern with these two is that these passes are very general, so what if you want to opt in a Turbo Chem Tank and they don't have MR, or like they don't have magic damage, uh, that might feel bad. But then I guess you would opt into the HP or the armor variants for your mythic. Randuin's no longer works as a uh, tech item for squishies. Uh, it's usefulness is scaled off of maximum health. It's critical strike damage uh, is a base passive and it's active is now just this low so the tech options with adc's where they would go randuin's items into a Z, and then they could randuin's a Z or whatever like into dive uh no longer viable there's no longer i think it had has haste right now that's no longer a thing either spear shojin is back and you get uh haste based off your bonus ad so you can get up to let's say i uh, let's say about 40 to 50 percent haste just off a single item if you go into a damage build um, CC abilities have less haste given by this item which is important to note um, and then they also gain up to 15 percent or 10 percent move speed based on your missing health and it's not towards enemy it's just in general ravenous hydra is now the new magi for fighter items um, you now gain a stack of AD and Omnivamp every time you kill an enemy. Stack up to 25 AD and 5% Omnivamp and lose 50% of these stacks on death. Uh, this item already has ridiculous stats, so this is this is a scaling item that is also very expensive, so I don't know how this will go. Uh, this should be a huge snowball, but I don't know if the build path will be good enough or like how this is going to work in general. But yeah. That's the preseason. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, it is a long video. I'll have timestamps in the video. And have a nice day. Bye bye.